The development of hydrogen powered cars could be a historic turning point for the global automotive industry as well as motorsports. With climate change and many governments' net zero targets, there is significant pressure for manufacturers and series investors to embrace carbon free technologies, including more sustainable ways to power race cars. Take the Formula E Championship for instance, initially a platform for only developing EV technology for the road and sustainable mobility, it has now become the first port on earth with a net zero carbon footprint. And although the series has improved significantly since its start in 2014, there are still major concerns with the sustainability in the very long term for both investors and OEMs. Because as of right now, Formula E races are still relatively short, and the vehicles are also much less powerful than the equivalent Formula 1 or NASCAR vehicles. And to truly decarbonize series like NASCAR, WEC, and Formula 1, you need more than just heavy batteries and a charging infrastructure. You need something that can provide the longevity, the energy density, and the flexibility to operate a series in some of the most remote parts on Earth and also support the decarbonization of the back end grid. And that right there, folks, is where hydrogen can play a key role. And in this video, I want to explain exactly how fuel cells can help revolutionize the motorsports industry, which teams and companies are currently working on developing hydrogen race cars, and also how they compare to battery electric solutions, as we've already seen through something like Formula E. But as usual, folks, before we get into it, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So to start things off, let me explain exactly why right now is a very opportune time to be discussing a hydrogen race car. Because as I'm filming this video, the 24 hours of Le Mans in France is currently going on, which is by far the biggest motorsports event on earth, which always takes place in June. And when it comes to technological innovation and thoroughbred racing, Le Mans and the World Endurance Championship is top spot, surpassing even something like Formula 1. And what makes this year's race extra special is not only is it the 100th anniversary of the Le Mans race, but this is the first year with the new hyperclass car category for WEC. And this class has pulled in automakers from all across the world, including the likes of Cadillac, Peugeot, Porsche, and yes, even Ferrari. But believe it or not, that is not where the new entrance of vehicles for 2023 even stopped. Because the reigning world champions of Le Mans, Toyota Gazoo Racing, just unveiled their very first hydrogen prototype vehicle. Nicknamed the GRH2 racing concept, this is going to be Toyota's next-gen entry into Le Mans in 2026. Toyota is officially ditching the internal combustion engine for 2026 and opting to use a hydrogen combustion engine developed completely in-house with their partners from Denso. And with Toyota having won the five past Le Mans since 2018, this is obviously a pretty big deal. Toyota is at the forefront of motorsports in various categories from WEC to WRC and even at one point Formula One. So them pushing towards using hydrogen fuel cell and combustion technology is a pretty big move forward for the overall industry in adopting cleaner and zero emission solutions. If I had to bet on one automaker on earth to reinvent the internal combustion engine, it would undoubtedly be Toyota. Not only is it the most successful car manufacturer on planet earth, but it is known extensively to pursue new and novel technologies, which in many cases have been quite successful. Not only was Toyota first to market with a mass producible hydrogen fuel cell vehicle in the Toyota Mirai earlier this decade, but they also just recently last month brought the first hydrogen internal combustion engine race car to the world. A modified Toyota Corolla hatchback with a 2023 model year raced at the 24 hour race in Fuji in Japan. And this one was not your normal hydrogen car because this one actually ran on liquid-cooled hydrogen, 
which increases refueling time, lowers cost, and increases energy efficiency. And the vehicle on track runs just like your regular internal combustion engine, except the only difference is you are not pouring in gasoline or diesel, but you are pouring in liquid hydrogen fuel. And this is the exact same engine technology that Toyota is planning to bring to the Le Mans 24 hours in 2026 with its recently announced GRH2. Because, believe it or not, internal combustion engines themselves are not pollutive to the environment. The only thing that is actually harming the environment is the fuel you're using in that internal combustion engine. And although hydrogen produces zero emissions when used in a fuel cell to produce electricity, it also produces near zero emissions when combusted at high temperatures. Near zero NOx, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and sulfuric acids are released in the tailpipe of a hydrogen engine. The only particulate emissions are typically nitric oxides, which typically can be filtered out using catalytic type converters. And although using a direct hydrogen fuel cell would typically be more energy efficient and sustainable, an internal combustion engine simply cannot be replaced in so many motorsport series across the world. Car enthusiasts would agree with me when I say this, but you simply cannot beat the roar and feel of an engine and a transmission, especially on a racetrack. And because motorsports plays a very vital role in the advancements of most automotive technologies, it's going to be very critical to develop technologies that can ensure the sustainability of a lot of these series. Not only are lithium ion batteries too heavy for most racing applications, but they are also quite unsustainable from a rare earth and metal standpoint, especially when you need a lot of energy storage capacity for endurance racing. Not to mention the fact they have low energy density, which means they take up a lot of space on your vehicle, which obviously is very impractical for racing vehicles. And not to mention the fact it takes hours on hours to typically recharge a 100 plus kilowatt hour battery, which most racing series can't even charge because of the limited infrastructure available at most racing sites. Because guess what, the motorsport industry on earth has been around for almost 100 years and it has adapted towards using mostly liquid fuels, not electrons. And hydrogen gas from a clean mobility standpoint provides the closest proximity and use case to gasoline and ethanol. Now, don't get me wrong, hydrogen still has some hurdles it has to overcome in the short term to become a widely accepted fuel. Not only is hydrogen in some cases difficult to handle and store because you need to compress it or liquefy it to negative 400 degrees Celsius, but when used in an internal combustion engine, it is actually quite inefficient, meaning you might not get the same amount of range as you would in an ethanol, kerosene, or gasoline engine. However, just like they sound, these problems can be fixed by scale, R&D, and innovation. And it seems like right now that is exactly what Toyota is trying to accomplish. You need some automaker on earth to take the charge with a new technology. And I would rather have it the biggest automaker on planet earth by the name of Toyota do it than any other company, even if in the short term a lot of hurdles and cash burn needs to be done. And what further adds to some of the optimism around hydrogen fuel is that it is extremely flexible because it can be used in a fuel cell to power an electric motor, or it can be used as feedstock to make synthetic fuels for something like IndyCar. Synthetic fuels or e-fuels are just like they sound. They are gasoline fuels that are basically the same as what we use on the roads today, but they are made from renewable resources, most of the time through carbon capture and renewable green hydrogen. As a matter of fact, the world's biggest motorsport series, Formula One, is already expected to use e-fuels by 2030, which will provide them with a basically net zero carbon footprint because all the emissions they release while racing could potentially be captured during the production of the fuel. Now, obviously, this is something that has yet to be proven, but it is still a pathway for hydrogen-based technologies to take if internal combustion engines don't succeed. And the best part is that synthetic fuels offer the same driving experience as a regular engine, which means series like F1 and WEC can stand the test of time. 
And because of exactly these benefits, a lot of OEMs, series, and states are exploring hydrogen racing series, not for tomorrow, but for today. Not only including Extreme E, but Forza Hydrogen Racing, and even Mission H24 for Le Mans. So what do you guys think? Is hydrogen the alternative fuel that we've all been waiting for to help save motorsports? Or is battery electric going to take the charge like in Formula E? As usual, guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.